Hello, my name is Igor and welcome to another filament dry review. And this time it is the Creative Filament Dry Box and this package is sent to me by Banggood for a review. Now let's see first, uh, why do you need a filament dryer? Well, all filaments can mo absorb moisture from the air. Some filaments are less sensitive to this PLA and ABS, for example, I store them in open air and I don't have any problems with them. Of course, it is, it depends uh, where do you live. Uh, PTG, TPU, nylon are more sensitive to this. And uh, how can you know that you need a filament dryer? Well, for example, with the PLA, it will become more brittle. With PTG, you will notice more stringing and weaker layer adhesion. Of course, this is a little bit hard to notice without measuring. ABS, well, actually, I'm not sure what's uh, with the ABS. Uh, how can you notice that it needs drying? TPU, well, you will notice uh, more stringing than usual. And uh, sometimes you can hear some small crack sounds during the extruding. Those are uh, boiling of the macro uh, water drops. And with the nylon, it is more critical. You will also uh, hear those uh, crack sounds. Uh, you can notice a lot of stringing and uh, very bad surface quality. So the nylon is the most critical and you need the filament dryer not only to dry the filament before usage, but also it is highly recommend to use it during the printing. Okay, now let's see uh, what's on this uh, box. Well, there is not much information on the box. Uh, I can see one kilogram tray, uh, quick warm up. On the website, I can notice some useful information. For example, uh, that it works on 155 watts. And it works directly on AC power, it, it goes inside. Just for comparison, I think I have four or five filament drives uh, tested on this video. And uh, the higher uh, power was 48 watts. All of them work on DC power. And uh, compared to that, uh, this is very promising. Now the temperature, according to the website, is 60 degrees Celsius plus minus 10. Uh, this is a very strange decision. Uh, we cannot adju adjust this. It looks like it is designed almost only for, I don't know, PETG, because it is too much for PLA. Uh, for nylon, it is uh, not enough. Of course, it can keep the nylon uh, dry after you dry it in an oven, for example. Uh, by the way, drying in the oven is uh, um, a little bit risky. Uh, because uh, at least in my oven, usually in ovens, you cannot set the temperature so precisely. So if you set it, I know, to 80 degrees Celsius, it will variate plus minus 20 degrees Celsius before it is uh, constant. So you may ruin the filament or the spool. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, dedicated filament dryers are better for these purposes. And of course, you can use it uh, during the printing. Of course, I'm sure there are some DIY hacks to use the oven directly. Uh, for uh, pr printing, but uh, uh, I don't think that that's too common and too comfortable solution. No power adapter, only a power cable because directly AC power goes inside. So be, uh, pay attention to buy with the proper plug. And it has some foil protection on it, so let's remove it. User manual. And this is the scanned page of the user manual. And I can see here that the temperature range is 50 degrees Celsius plus minus 10, not 60. And the power is 120 watts, not uh, 155. Well, anyway, this temperature will be measured in my experiments, so we will see the real values. Well, let's analyze the box. As I mentioned, this is a power cable which goes here on the, the back side. And this is the bottom side of the box. Here we can see some information about the power. And also here I can see that 50 degrees Celsius plus minus 10. Hmm. On the front only one button and uh, which can be rotated and, and pressed and I think this is a timer only so that we cannot set the temperature. There is no ceiling and uh, no thermal insulation inside. You can see we have those uh, rollers and properly the heating element is below this place so that's good because the heating is more uh, equal and I can see some holes so uh, I believe the, the, there should be a fan but I'm not sure at this moment because there is no information on the website about this 
length of the power cable is, is uh, approximately one and a half meters. It's off and probably uh, if I want to turn it on then I have to set the time maybe no yes hmm so when I set the time uh, it will start with the drying and I can hear and now I'm sure that it has a fan and I think it's a little bit loud Of course it is quieter when the box is closed, but it would be good if it would be quieter. So it has a fence, but I cannot see a dedicated space for the desiccant. Of course you can always add a silica gel inside the spool. And I highly recommend to use something, uh, some kind of desiccant inside, because uh, otherwise the humidity will be stuck inside. Only one hole we have here and it has very nice sealing and uh, you don't want that moisture to be stuck inside during the drying. And now I couldn't find information about the size, uh, only, only the overall size, but uh, what is the size of the spool? So this is the regular size of the spool, so probably this will fit without any problems. And this is my wider spool and uh, well, it cannot fit even in the box, not only on the rollers. And I will try somehow to measure the distance between the rollers because uh, I think this is the limitation for the maximum size of the spool. The diameter, well, this is very close to the maximum. So let's measure this diameter. Two hundred millimeters or twenty centimeters. And the thickness of this pole is sixty three point four millimeters. And I can see approximately more than ten millimeters space down there. Maybe it will be visible on camera too. And in the meantime, I found this pole, which is uh, which has smaller diameter, but the thickness of this pole is. 76.6 millimeters and uh, I need maybe one or two millimeters so I believe the maximum width of the spool which can fit inside this filament dryer is 75 millimeters just to be sure I printed this part this is exactly 75 millimeters length and I can see maybe one extra millimeter space I have here. And again I will repeat that experiment. So I have here approximately 10 meters of PTG. And I will left it here in the water overnight. This filament was in water more than 10 hours. Now I'll dry it a little bit, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just the surface to be dry and then I'll try to do the stringing test printing and uh, dry it and repeat the test again. Crack sounds, boiling of small macro drops of the water. happened uh, when the filament is wet I don't have that good uh, bed adhesion so I stop the printing now but you can see the result uh, I think I am missing here maybe uh, three or four millimeters and now I will try the filament and repeat the test with the same g-code first I will measure the weight 12.12 .12 grams and I will place it in the filament dryer for 6 hours and also well, I will place here this humidity and temperature meter and I will create a time-lapse video but maybe only first one hour 
and I hope it will not exceed 60 degrees Celsius because that's the limit for this uh, temperature and humidity meter. Okay, I cannot set six hours, only two, four or eight hours. So let's see, well, I will place it four and then additional two. And the reason that I'm here in this basement is that uh, here I can measure the power consumption. 21.73 kilowatt hours is current state. And I will check after six hours what will be the new value. Oh, I almost forgot, I will insert the test second. And now I will start the time lapse, but only maybe one or two hours. The temperature stabilized very quickly, but since the heating element turns on and off every 3 or 4 minutes, the temperature dilatation is 5 degrees Celsius in the middle of the box. 2 hours pass, so I will stop the time lapse and I will record the temperature and humidity every hour. And I can see the humidity reduced to only 27%, that's, that's a good sign. I want to show you how the temperature variates inside, because that relay clicks only after every maybe 3 or 4 minutes. So now it's currently it's reducing, but I will create a time lapse of maybe 5 minutes. Here you can see how the temperature drops, and then I can hear a click sound, the heating starts, after 5 degrees Celsius another click sound by the relay, and the cooling process starting. And now see you in uh, less than 4 hours. The drying is almost finished, uh, 6 hours. And let's see on the power meter, the state is uh, 21.90 kilowatt hours. And from this I can calculate the power consumption. The drying is finished, I will turn off uh, for a short time. And now I can measure the weight. 12.06 grams. And on this graph you can see the temperature and relative humidity. The temperature stabilized very quickly, uh, only this dilatation is of that uh, timer on the relay. And the relative humidity uh, constantly drops down until 23% uh, at the end of the drying. This PETG deformed a little bit here, which was the closest to the heating plate. Uh, I can imagine what would happen with the PLA. I heard a click sound, so now it is start uh, with the heating, so let's check the temperature to this thermal camera. And it is blowing the air, which is uh, 54 degrees Celsius, and it is raising, because now it starts with the heating. And the plate is uh, 59, 60 degrees Celsius, so I follow the temperature of the air. Temperature of the heating plate was uh, going up to 70 degrees Celsius and now it's, I heard the click sound and it's turning off and the proper bit will cool down to 40 and then we will turn it on. And I can see through this thermal camera that this is the hottest spot. So the build plate, according to uh, this sensor, it heats up to 70 degrees Celsius and then it cools, cools down to 40. Too big difference here, I think. But it's time to print again with this uh, dried filament now. And now let's print the same string test using the same G-code. Can you see the difference? 
And this one is smaller because uh, you saw uh, a few seconds ago uh, it failed during the printing. And now the conclusions and I will start with the positive things. Yes, the creative uh, dry box can dry a PETG and this means it can dry PLA, TPU, ABS without any problems. The temperature is not big enough to dry nylon completely, but uh, it can keep it dry after you dry it in, let's say, an oven, for example. Be careful with the drying of PLA because uh, the temperature of the heat plate sometimes uh, varies a lot. Uh, you saw, first I thought, uh, it, uh, I can hear that uh, relay click sound, and it clicks after every maybe 3 or 4 minutes. And the temperature in the center of the box variates 5 degrees Celsius. That's not much, that's okay. But when I measure the temperature on the heat plate, uh, there I notice uh, a 30 degrees Celsius dilatation. And that's too much, because uh, you saw my, even my PETG was deformated a little bit. Uh, I can imagine what could happen with the PLA. Of course, I didn't use the spool, so uh, if you use a spool, it's a little bit bigger distance for the heat plate, but it varies from 45 to over the 70 degrees Celsius. It would be much better if it, this uh, would be more constant, let's say, between this 50 or 55, and this temperature we could set, and that would be uh, better. A few other things which I'm missing here, I don't know, tamara insulation, uh, a little bit bigger size and similar. So here is the checklist because I always finish the film and dry review with a checklist for company if they will create, uh, I don't know, Creality Film and Dry V2. Uh, I would like to see these improvements. I hope I could uh, help you and give you some useful information. Uh, usually I do that uh, sponge uh, test with the film and dryers. Uh, here I didn't because uh, I have one more filament dryer uh, waiting for the review and after that I will uh, compare all six uh, filament dryers to find out which one dries better and I will do that uh, sponge uh, drying test uh, with uh, all at the same time. I hope you will follow me to that video too. Until that, thank you for watching and happy drying and printing. Bye.